G'day everyone, Jamie Chapman for another episode of 3 Minute Histology. Uh, in this episode, we're going to be having a, or continuing our look at this uh, section here. This is the histology of the heart. So we'll be sort of continuing our look at some of the major features which we can see here. Um, so let's start our three minutes. So this is a really nice section. It's sort of the junction between the atrium and the ventricle here. So this is actually uh, the coronary sulcus or the atrioventricular groove. Uh, if you've got your groove on, uh, we can actually find adipose tissue here. We find the coronary vessels here as well. So you can see some of these here. So here's the atrium. You can actually see it's a much thinner wall compared to the underlying ventricle. Obviously, there's different pressures required uh, in the atria. We need to move the blood from the uh, atrial chamber down to the ventricle, whereas the ventricle needs to move it out into through the major blood vessels, the aorta, the pulmonary uh, artery, and so on. So here we've actually got the atrioventricular valve, and you can see it's actually connected by this little cable, uh, this little tendon known as a chordae tendine. Uh, if we zoom in, we can actually sort of see it extending out, and then uh, the fibers of the chordae tendine blend with this little cusp here, which is one of the cusps of the atrioventricular valve. So we follow this along, we can see a dense uh, regular connective tissue. You can see all the fibers running in the same direction. These are fibrocytes. And then if we continue down, we, um, if we zoom out, it might give us a little bit of better overview. This is a papillary muscle. And a papillary muscle is an extension of the ventricular uh, wall. It's made up of largely cardiac muscle cells. We can see them if we sort of zoom in here. We wait for the uh, digital slide box to catch up. You can see the branching nature of the cardiac muscle cells here. If we zoom right in, we'll be going to be able to see some striations. You might be able to make out some striations here. A nice little capillary here. Um, but if we um, zoom out and have a look at this structure in a little bit more t detail, um, the uh, Atrioventricular valve is made up of, basically, you can sort of think of it as an endocardial sandwich. We've got two layers of endocardium, one on the atrial side, one on the ventricular side, and then found in between is the connective tissue of the fibrous skeleton of the heart. And that's sort of an extension of this uh, connective tissue which we find separating the atria and the ventricle. It helps to isolate them electrically um, so that the atria contracts separately from the ventricle. And then if we look at the structure in a little bit more detail, we notice that the structure is a little bit different here on the atrial side. This is known as the lamina spongiosa, whereas down on the ventricular side, this is known as the lamina fibrosa, more connective tissue. And you can see, obviously, this is a lot more cellular uh, than we see with the uh, ventricle. We sort of follow the, um, the atrial side along, we can see that it's really sort of an extension of this thick uh, endocardial layer which we have here. And, uh, if you were to see a sort of gross specimen of the heart that's really reflected in the, the structure. Um, so the atria often has a very white appearance to its surface compared to the ventricle, which doesn't have that thick layer of the endocardium. Ignore this um, artifact here. So obviously that's reflected by the amount of connective tissue there. Well, that's pretty much another three minutes gone. So we've had a look at the um, structure of the heart wall, the atrioventricular valve, and of course the papillary muscle and the chordae tendine. I hope you found that useful. Huru. <laughs>